pace car will pull out of proceedings and leave these American muscle cars to do what they've been doing since 1966. And we feel it still, in the words of Portugal the man. Here we go! Q3 Architecture TA2 Series roars into action here at Sebring. Side by side at the moment, Matos and Zilic. Matos in the all-white new colours for Nitro Motorsport will try and get the jump, but the number seven silver hair is a silver fox. Nicely done by Zilic. Takes the inside line. Matos goes high and wide. It's not over yet. And a little bit of bumping and bruising here through. You can see how the bumps affect these cars as they dive into the first tight turn, three turn, and head towards the bridge for the first time, Evan. Yeah, I mean, it was a great start. Pretty clean, no contact, really. I mean, some slight bumping and banging, but that's part of racing. So, really great start. Oh, Whoa! you can see Ben Mayer off the track right there. Adrian Lostasi is going to maximize on that bad drive out of the corner from Ben Mayer, and he's going to make up that position. Yeah, good game by Lostoski, and he, we all were on board with that. And Ben Mayer just taking to the grass for a moment. Not the fastest route as they head down into the Q3 turn. Seven hairpin for the first time and head up the Fangio straight for the first time. Like you say, a good clean start. 30 laps here in the Q3 Architecture TA2. Round one from Sebring. I love the fact that it's a plain level field for everybody looking to 2024. Heaps of points up for grabs. But as Matos proved last year, getting a win, getting that thing on the board and saying that you are the winner of the first race is so psychologically important. Yeah, I mean, it's psychologically important. And it just shows that the all the other competitors that you're here and you're here to do well. So, I mean, it's kind of like racing, I say, is always 95% a mental game. Obviously, you need to be physically strong enough to like drive the car. Are, but you need to be in the in the right mindset and that helps you getting that first win helps you get in a better mindset and it just shows that the other competitors that you're here to you're here to win our first look at Tommy Sheehan on board in the Pro-Am class and we'll be watching his data if you stay and look at the uh, data on the bottom there you can see where he's breaking and where the throttle is you can also see the miles per hour and RPM he's dealing with so for the wannabe racers out there you've got a good insight as to how they come down the Almond Strait and I was clocking them yesterday and there's some very big top speeds coming through there. It's a long, long straight, the Almond Strait. It kind of belies just how long it is from the camera angle. Uh, as Annunciata dives through ahead of Merrill, a formal winner here, bouncing over the curbs at sunset. But it's a good lead at the moment for Connor Zilic. Zilic looking very good so far. Matos second, Gonzalez third, Austin Green fourth in the all yellow. Three-dimensional services. Annunciata under pressure from Merrill. Merrill is one of those guys that likes to attack early, but it's uh, it's hurt him in the past too. Yeah, I mean, so Merrill's, his whole, like, racing strategy is really be there strong in the beginning. He's got a fast car in the beginning, and he's really pushing the car. But he's also using a lot of the tires. So right here on Annunziata, he's really trying to get by, because in these beginning stages of the races, he likes to do well and go fast. Sometimes that can't hurt him in the end of the race. If we stay green for a long period of time, we're racing for 15 laps without a full course caution, that can cause his tires to kind of get overheated, and that could potentially hurt him in the end of the race. Merrill's trying to be super aggressive, get by Annunziata, make the time up while he still has good tires, and then hope for a full course yellow to kind of bring the tires back down to temperature. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm also looking closely at Adam Andretti. Good to see him back in TA2 uh, with the ultimate headers racing Chevrolet, uh, just behind Merrill, in fact, and then Gio Ruggiero in eighth position, Lostowski ninth, and we're on board with him now as he heads up the back part of the circuit to the top of Fangio and heading down towards Collier and Tower turn 13. There is an overtake, as you saw in your track map, into this right-hander, but it's, uh, it's, it's uh, sometimes you can lock up, as we just saw somebody doing just then. Yeah, it's really easy to lock up, because like I touched on in the track, track like walkthrough, it's not a straight braking zone. So these cars, they don't have ABS. They don't have any really nannies at all. So when you're braking in a straight line, it's pretty easy to not lock up a tire. But as soon as you start to dip in with that steering wheel, turn it in, it's really easy to lock that inside front because the weight starts to shift to the outside. So it gets kind of unloaded, so it's really easy to lock up. So that's something you got to be careful with there. And then when you're making a pass, you got to be careful because if you lock up when you're in on the inside trying to make that, that pass, you can really easily just slide out into the other guy and uh, have contact. And how hard can you hurt the Pirellis over 100 miles if you start making lockups like that? I mean, eventually they're going to wear, obviously, but uh, are they pretty hardy? Yeah, so these Pirelli tires, they're great tires. So if you have like one lockup in the whole race, you're not, you're not yeah. going to have a problem at all. But the thing about a lockup is it, it flat spots the tires. So the tires are obviously round, but when you have it locked up and just sliding across the pavement, it wears that one spot really aggressively. So it, gets, it actually gets flat. So you get a really bad vibration 
And then the problem is once you do that, once you flat spot these tires, any racing tire, it's really hard because whenever you hit the brakes, it's going to want to find that spot and just lock up again. So if you have a lock up with one of these Pirelli tires, you got to make sure to not lock it up again. So then you can actually have that flat spot kind of round out over time. These tires are great. So with these cars and these 100 miles, ooh, great move by, uh, what is that? I don't know what car that is, but great move by him. Um, so with these tires, you can kind of drive them really hard through the whole race. You just got to be careful with the rear tires. These cars have so much horsepower that you can just get wheel spin really easily. That'll end up overheating the rear tires, and then you'll really be chasing that towards the end of the uh, session. I think that was uh, Roberto Sabato just getting through on Tommy Sheehan, and he's dropped down uh, a long way. In fact, he's down in 21st place. Also saw a shot of the uh, 16, I think, 17-year-old Gio Ruggiero for Nitro Motorsports from Seekonk, uh, Massachusetts, another TID, uh, TRD, uh, Toyota-supported uh, driver, and he was the 2022 Show Me The Money Late Pro Late Model Series champion. So we've got guys coming from um, all sorts of different angles. He drove for Venturini uh, Motorsports. Uh, and uh, this is his first Trans Am race, so we'll keep an eye on the number 40, who's currently in eighth position as we go back on board with Lostowski. Lostowski in ninth, just behind the man I was talking about. Yeah, I'm just watching that car from the inboard. You can see in the, the lower right, you can see his hands. So yeah. he doesn't seem to be fighting the car that much. That means he's got a race car he's pretty happy with. The car doesn't seem like it's really tight. It doesn't seem like it's pushing anywhere. And the rear end doesn't seem like it's sliding around too much. So it seems like Adrian Lostowski is a really great race car that he's happy with right now. Yep, the uh, CMI spot on Sir Ford Mustang going good. And through goes the 83. But things stepping down now as... Top six is still Zilic, Matos, Gonzalez, Green, Merrill. Green, of course, our Young Gun winner last year. And uh, our top rookie, excuse me, I should say, uh, in fourth position. Merrill fifth, Annunciata sixth. Andretti's up to seventh now. And uh, Gio Ruggiari in eighth, then Lostowski ninth. And Darren Mock, first time we mentioned him, in tenth position. He, too, looking for a big season, the youngster. And... All of those youngsters I mentioned, and they range between, what, 16 and 24, but they're all going for the Young Guns title. 20,000 up for grabs. You were up in that uh, battle, and uh, I love to see all you youngsters fighting each other, even though you're not necessarily in the same position next to each other. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely interesting, because it's like you're fighting for this other championship, but you're also still fighting for the main national championship. So when I was out there, obviously I'd r rather be out there right now than the commentary, booth, no offense, but when I was out there, <laughs> it's... Um, None taken. It's interesting because you don't really focus on the other championships. You don't really think about the championship too much. You just think about trying to get the points for this race. You Obviously, this is the first race of the season, so you can't control what's happening 10 races in. Um, so right here in, these, in this state, they're just trying to focus on finishing this race, getting as much points as they can, and they'll start worrying about that $20,000 Young Gun Scholarship and the national championship towards the last few races when it really is really up for grabs. Start of the season and a clean start it is. Four laps into the 30 here. TA2 brought to you uh, by Cube 3 Architecture, our brand new title sponsor. Great to have them on board and so far it's been a clean set of heels to start us off. Zillage uh, winning his driver last year with what, four poles and five wins is out doing what he does best. He's already been a winner. I think the youngest ever winner at uh, Daytona a few weeks ago. Yeah, I mean that was really impressive. He, uh, I was at that Daytona 24 race and his team was just, they were great the whole time. He was really confident in that race car and he was fast so they put together a great team. They had great pit stops, great strategies and uh, they, they came out to win, so that was great for them. Connor Zill, it's just in this race, it's not in the 24, in this race, he just clocked the fastest lap of the session and a 207 won. So he's been consistently half a second to a second a lap faster than Rafa Matos in the lead, and he's just building that lead to now eight point or 3.8 seconds. So he's doing a great job. Yeah, no question. The one man that uh, has surprised me is Connor Mosak. He's gone a little backwards. He's down in what, 14th position at the moment? Uh, uh, in uh, the number 77, the, the Camaro. Uh, yeah, that's really surprising for him. I mean, he's a great driver. I think he was, I don't want to get this wrong because I don't know too much, but I think he was either an Xfinity or a truck driver last year yep, in NASCAR. Yep, yep. Um, so he's been really fast I think fast he did both, to be honest, but mainly Xfinity. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So he's been really fast. He's a great driver, So, but he's struggling right now in 14th position, started fourth. Um, so it's interesting to see that. I wonder if he's having a mechanical issue. Maybe he's having something wrong with the setup that he's not happy with. You can see his car, the gray and orange one right there on our screen. So I don't really know what's going wrong. It's obviously not a, a 
a terminal issue because he's still out there going, but it might be slowing him down just a little bit. And there's Barry Bowes, of course, swapping teams this season, and he's our Pro-Am leader at the moment. Uh, of course, battles within battles in each and every one. I mentioned the young guns. We've also got the Pro-Am guys out there. Uh, they're not doing a full season, but they are fighting against each other for the Pro-Am honors. Uh, Tommy Sheehan also involved in that, as is Lee Saunders, new to the... Now, nah, this is not good for Tommy Sheehan uh, oh, no. coming in, and obviously with the... Uh, bonnet off and it looks as though something's I don't know. no not smoking no, I wouldn't say that somebody else in as well one of the BC cars but uh, Tommy Sheehan parked up and of course no pit stops expected uh, in these 100 mile races but something wrong with Tommy's car yeah I mean it's hard because you obviously have the winter to rebuild your car and try and build the best car you can but sometimes when you take the whole thing apart and put it back together there's some little gremlins that you might not see so when you're building a new car or fixing up your old one just rebuilding it there's little things that might go wrong and it seems like one of those might have happened to Tommy Sheehan so here's your race leader completing another lap and he's been averaging in the 207s throughout most of this race and uh, just extending that lead he's got a gap of some 4.3 seconds over Rafa Matos in second place and I think it's going to take a caution perhaps to really change the complexion of this race but there's a long way to go yet and we all know in Trans Am six of the 30 gone. Yeah, just looking at that number seven silver hair racing car, that car looks dialed in. I mean, it doesn't seem like he's sliding the rear. It doesn't seem like the car's like not wanting to turn. It just seems like the thing is hooked up and just glued to the racetrack. So I think he's just having a breeze of a time driving that car because um, it seems like it's so dialed in. Like you can see right here, he's not having to, if you're looking at the front wheels, you can see he's not really having to fight it. And on the exit there, he's not having any big slides. It's just he's putting the power down smooth, and uh, that's where he's really gaining all his time. I think what was so impressive about Zilic uh, last year was he had to make several dashes from the back of the grid, and even at street races, was able to do that, make passes and make moves and use what he had underneath him, uh, whether it be from a qualifying situation or a penalty that he was given. But he was able to just really make his way through, and that's what impressed me last year and he really is becoming uh, the ultimate man and of course winning at Detroit in front of Chevrolet was no harm no foul for no. him <laughs> oh no Doug Peterson Doug also Peterson in also in and he's got that special livery um, this weekend and uh, you'll see it there you can see not the usual yellow three-dimensional colors and he is uh, making a memory of Barry Moore who passed away recently and so therefore and of course he was a former military man so he is paying homage to him but sadly not where he wants to be the former champion running austin green only they've uh, shrunk down the team as three-dimensional uh, and maybe that's a, a feeling that doug just wants to concentrate on the youngster austin green who also is doing uh, some xfinity work too and he's going to be representing doug peterson so i think doug kind of spreading out in one way and then slimming down his trans am uh, action the other way but still enjoying it I'm sure now you see the gap between first second and third as they cross the strip and in fourth place is the teammate to Peterson that is Austin Green in the more traditional three-dimensional services colors Austin Green currently in the 89 in fourth position Merrill behind him in fifth and Unciata in sixth Andretti has moved up to seventh Ruggiero in eighth Lostowski ninth and Darren Mock is in tenth position Rafa Matos just did just did the fastest lap of the session. Um, so he's definitely closing that gap a little bit to Connor Zilich. Good point, Rafa Matos doing the quickest lap. And Evan, you picked up on that nicely uh, because we need Rafa, Rafa to, he's just gone into, he's just dipped into the 2069. So he's obviously not wanting to lose any more pace on Connor Zilich because the gap has gone quite high up. He's got a decent gap. Uh, it's nice to see him in these new colors, these red, white, and blue colors uh, for Nitro Motorsports. And uh, I guess the reason he's there is that he just wants to keep uh, swapping it up and wants to keep uh, helping. He's also got a, a scholarship uh, as well, a uh, Pirella scholarship for helping uh, the youngsters in, uh, or going to help the youngsters in Nitro Motorsports. And that's going to be great for any youngster, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. I mean, Rafa Mato is obviously so much experience, so he can be a great mentor. He knows so much. He's raised, I think he was an Indy Lights champion. Oh, Doug Peterson out of the car, so that must be a terminal issue. Yep. But um, Rafa Mato, who raced for Doug Peterson last year, actually, he's done a lot of stuff. I mean, he's an Indy Lights rookie, or Indy Lights champion, Indy Car Rookie of the Year, so he has a lot of experience, Rafa Matos does, so he can really be help. He can help those young drivers in Nitro Motorsports. 
Well, as you can see, Doug talking to the team, and they'll get things back together and get ready for Atlanta and Nola to come. But uh, something went wrong there for the three-dimensional services team, one of the most successful teams we've had in the last few years. We're keeping an eye on this man, Rafa Matos, got his new sponsorship, Concord uh, Flagpole uh, this year. Uh, and then, of course, the number 70, Tyler Gonzalez. Just 17 years of age, a Toyota champion last year in the GR Cup. And did do one race, did Tyler, at Cota uh, last year. So we've, we've seen him in a TA2 car, but this is his first real run. And uh, we'll be watching for big things from him. Uh, just 19 years of age. Yeah, so we saw him run at Coda, I believe. I don't remember how he did, but he normally was going to drive the number 30 Nitro car for this this um, this race. But Brent Cruz obviously is out with illness, so he um, so Tyler Gonzalez is, is driving Brent Cruz's car, and there's a full course yellow. Yeah. So that's going to bunch the field up. That's really what Rafa Matos has been hoping for, because that bunches him up to Connor Zilich and gives him a uh, an opportunity to have a shot at him. Lights are out on the pace car, so that means we're going green this time, I believe. We are going green in a moment's time. So the pace car coming off, it was a fire with one of the cars. That was the problem. And as we are live on MAV TV and on the Sebring Speed Tour, we go to green again, and Connor Zilic is away and leads this pack. Rafa Matos has got an enormous opportunity right now. Gonzalez looking for a way through. Here comes on the outside, Austin Green in the all yellow. Annunciata jinx to the outside. Everybody looking for position. Likewise, Merrill, Annunciata, Andretti, all trying to make up a spot here at the restart. As we go back on board with Lostowski, as he makes his move on the number 40. Nice move indeed on Ruggiero and does make it through at turn three. Nicely done. Yeah, I mean, that was a great move. Super, super, just like, textbook just out breaking the guy on the inside and then just forcing him out so then that's your line at that point so great move textbook move and uh now he's just looking forward to the next guy staying on board with los Tosk as he tries to make his way through uh, no real change at the front merrill made a nice move but he's still in fifth at the moment as we see the man in front of him that is the number 70 of tyler gonzalez and what a way to make a name for yourself like we said tyler joined us at the end of last year just for a one-off but now he's in the thick of it the youngster, and uh, still there in third place and holding his own, as we've seen so many times, and up against the likes of Matos and Merrill, who, of course, have gone head-to-head -head for their own title uh, just a, a year or so ago, two years, in fact. There's Anunciata, got his first win, last time out of Cota. Yeah, Adam Andretti, so the past few seasons when he's been driving a TA2 car, he's been driving a, an older, outdated TA2 yeah. car. I think the chassis was built in, like, 2013 or something, and an old motor, so... This year, he finally got a brand new Howe car, and uh, I was talking to him about it, and he's really happy about it. The car is feeling great. He's actually able to make the setup changes he wants. And he's able to get the car to drive the way he really, really desires. So I'm super happy for him with that, with that new car that he's really comfortable with. Yeah, and back with Ultimate Headers as well, and of course in the same paddock or stable with uh, Wally Dolan back, and he'll also be doing TA, and he's, he's also racing for Burton Racing in that TA, and it too, a brand new car. So Adam, absolutely skipping around the paddock at the moment and now he's making inroads because here comes the 41 adam andretti all over austin green and then Seattle, though right behind him and it's close there for this battle for the top six zillich completes the lap and is gapped once again the man in second place rafa matos 12 of the 27 laps gone the first round of the q3 architecture ta2 series and then Seattle, right there with andretti as they die through one where's the obvious place is it the hairpin yeah, so obviously for passing, into this turn, turn three is a great place to make a move because it's just a hard braking zone. Into turn seven, you can make a move. That's just a classic big braking zone. You just have to brake later than the next guy. Turn 10, same thing. Really smooth, great braking zone to just outbreak the guy. Um, turn 13, like we saw in the uh, a little bit earlier, you can make a move there. It's slightly harder to make a stick, but you certainly can. And then into Sunset Bend, turn 17, you can make a move. Um, just by outbreaking the guy as well. Well, Nunciata looks to the inside, and is he going to make the move of the hairpin? Yes, he does. And at the Q3, turn seven hairpin. Through goes Nunciata, but Andretti comes back at him. Side by side, oh. the youngster and Andretti's gone wide. Has he gone off? That would be bad news for him, as Lostowski's also trying to do the same here on Nunciata. That was close racing. You can see Nunciata made a great move into the Q3 architecture turn seven, but then on the exit, uh, 
Andretti did not give it up. He just stayed there. And they were kind of dooring each other the way by. And then going into that little kink of turn eight, um, they were side by side. And I think uh, Andretti ended up off the track a little bit and lost a few positions. Yeah, I'm going to see where he checks back in. Because I don't think he actually went off off. I think he went off and wide and then managed to rejoin. We'll soon find out though when they cross the line again then. But it's all drama here at the restart. Lostowski's gained the most. But that little battle between Annunziata and Andretti has led Andretti to go off track as they come out of 15 16 complex into the almond straight and down that almond straight they go Zilic leading the way dives into that last corner and Austin now Austin Green that is in the all-yellow three-dimensional services has managed to get a decent gap because of the shenanigans going on behind him and that will give him pause for thought because he's got a little bit of breathing room now yeah Andretti's dropped right down and he may be out to be honest we'll soon find out Annunziata doesn't have any damage though but it was a good little fight uh, I don't know you know whether you call that foul play or not but uh, either way Nunziata's on his way and he's still got this man Lostowski behind him yeah I mean that's a hard so obviously into the Q3 turn 7 you can make the great move under the braking but if the outside driver the over the driver getting overtake overtake and doesn't want to give it up like if they want to stay there it can be really hard because there's a bunch of like turns eight and nine you don't really think about them but they're little like bends they're normally easily flat out you can see them coming up if we stay on board with Ostoski. like right here there's some little like jinx so if you're side by side and you're not given room that can be really difficult to navigate through there when you're both trying to pass each other or not let the other one pass uh, Mandretti did come across the line in 22nd place he's behind Ethan Barker now and just ahead of Chris Durbin so a bag load of work for Adam Andretti to do having been up into the top seven uh, and top six at one point. Lostowski yeah. though still chasing Annunziata. When I was looking on the onboard with Adrian Lostowski I saw some big skid marks in that exact place where they had contact. I saw some big skid marks pointing to the outside so I wonder if he kind of had a little spin because of the contact. I don't really know it's hard to tell without the camera angle but it did look like his car did not stay in a straight line. Um, through that move. So I don't know if that'll be a penalty for Nunziata. I really doubt it. I think that's kind of a racing incident. They were both side-by-side -side racing hard. Um, it's just really unfortunate for Adam Andretti. I'm not a race director, but that's how I see it. I see it as a racing incident. And we welcome our viewers on MAP TV live here for the Q3 TA2 championship for 2024 from Sebring the home of where it all began for Trans Am back in 1966 Jochen Rint you might have heard the name became a great Formula One driver he won the first ever race a race that AJ Foyt was in and Paddy Hopker in a mini no less all the way back in 66 both those two drivers didn't finish but Jochen Rint in an Alfa Romeo did and he started a tradition that we see here all the way in 2024 great to see it continuing now, of course, with the tube frame and the very NASCAR-esque looking cars, as we take a look at Josh Hurley, one of the BC cars, the familiar colors of the BC racing colors, but great to see Josh Hurley finally behind the wheel. Like I said, he doesn't do a lot of Trans Am, but uh, got to know him when in 2020, during the pandemic, we did an entire uh, E-Series. I'd love to see that come back. And uh, it was fascinating to be part of. First time I've ever done anything like sim racing, but more importantly to commentate on it for me was wild because they were actual drivers in, in their homes during the pandemic. Yeah, those those racing series are so exciting. They're so much fun. And I think it would be kind of cool to do one nowadays, even though we're not in the pandemic and we can actually drive these real sure. race cars. But it'd be cool to have like a series before the race weekend because all these drivers are on their simulators at home preparing for these races. So it'd be cool to have an actual like event a series where you're racing on the track that you're going to race in the Trans Am car maybe the week after so that would be kind of cool. Prochuk getting the signal from Tommy Sheehan you were on board when he saw it just to go hey I see you you're right behind me you want to make the move go for it buddy and Prochuk goes through in the number nine. Yeah Tommy Sheehan's a lap down because he had to pit from the mechanical issue maybe he's a few laps down so he just didn't want to interrupt Pete Prochuk's race and just let him let him go by so then he can get the clean air and he can uh, let his car cool down and just kind of drive in it, uh, with nobody in front of them. What are your expectations? You've obviously looked at the field. You've driven against most of them 
Uh, there's a few new names that you may not have raced against, but uh, who do you see as the obvious favorite uh, if we take Cruz out of the equation for a second? Um, for this race or for the championship? Uh, both. So, I mean, I think Connor Zillich this weekend and la in the end of last year, he's been really unstoppable. Um, so for this race, I think Connor Zillich yeah. is going to be really, really effective. I mean, so far the race has been in his hands. I mean, he just set the fastest lap at 2.06.7, which is like insanely fast. Um, so I think this race, he's kind of in control, but he's busy doing, I don't know, actually, I don't know what con what's confidential with what he's doing, but um, I don't know what's announced yet. But he's doing some really cool things, some cool races, some cool series. Um, so he's going to be busy. So he's only going to be able to do three Trans Am races, I believe. So he's definitely not going to be a championship contender. But I think a championship, a real championship contender will be Rafa Matos. I think he has the experience. He's fast. He's in a great car, great team. So I think Rafa Matos is really going to be fighting for the championship this year. And, I mean, unfortunately, I don't think Brent Cruz is going to be in it because he missed the first race. So he missed out on these crucial points. Um, so right now, it looking like for this race, I think Connor Zillich is in the best place. And for the championship so far, I think Rafa Matos. Yeah, and Rafa Matos, of course, going for the record number of wins in Trans Am. And uh, he's equal at the moment. And he could get it. He could win that today if he's lucky. Uh, he sat there in second place as we're on board with Tommy Sheehan into turn three. Uh, like you say, a lap down at the moment for the Pro-Am driver. And there is Rafa Matos in the all red, white, and blue Concord American flagpole sponsored car racing for Nitro Motorsport. A big change for him, but I think he's relishing the opportunity to work with new folk and also perhaps work with some of the youngsters and help them along their way. Just watching that car, that car looks that look car looks really good through the corner. I mean, in turn 13 where we were just watching, Rafa was maximizing all the tracks. So that was great driving from his half. But um, the car was really wasn't sliding, wasn't really looking any feisty. It was just looking nice and smooth and great. An interesting way to see with these cars, an interesting thing to look at, is right on the front bumper on the bottom is the front splitter. So that's kind of what makes the front downforce for these cars. So you can watch it right there, the one that's super close to the front, uh, super close to the ground. And that just gets all the air to start coming over the car and get front downforce. So it's really interesting to watch the different ride heights of that front splitter. And then when you're getting it on the brakes, getting the nose of the car down to the ground, how close and how smooth that splitter can be. Um, in the braking zone. Like right there, you can see it was pretty smooth on the way in. This race getting to the halfway point now, and Matos just biding his time. There are both the leaders are in the 206s, the high 206s. Uh, last time out of 2075, in fact, actually both of them dropping off. Uh, Zilich did 207549. Uh, but that's still very fast around here for sure in a TA2 car. No question about it. And I'm keeping an eye on Andretti. He's got up to 18, so he's made some time up from that incident he had. Um, but he's really going to be working in that Chevrolet uh, Ultimate Headers car. DeLong uh, also trying to make his way up. And the top six is Zilich, Matos, Gonzalez, Merrill. Green drops to fifth. And Annunciato still in sixth place with Lostowski chasing him. Looking at Josh Hurley there for a moment in the 20, the BCR Greenlight Simulation Ford Mustang. And Greenlight Simulation is the company that Josh runs. Does a lot of simulation work. This is no surprise, therefore, he was our sim or eSport champion back in the day. The 54 Optima Batteries car just pulled into the pit lane. I just saw that out our window from the commentary booth, so he must have some mechanical issue. I'm kind of looking to see see what those mechanics are doing. They're kind of checking out the left front. We've had three cars come into the pits. Yeah, that's Bruce all Raymond. Three, all three have been looking at something in the left front of the car, so I don't really know what that is. And Maybe they're cutting down tires. I don't think so, but maybe they're having suspension issues. It's really interesting because all three of the people that have been in the pits yeah, have been related point. to yeah. that corner of the car. Nice spot. I mean, yeah, that's Bruce Raymond we're looking at uh, in the Optima Batteries car. And like you say, they're just quizzically looking. It's not specific, is it? They're not quite sure what, what the deal is. Uh, but anyway, Bruce Raymond is losing time. That fender's also a little bit, you can see the fender, the fiberglass is cracked a little bit. Yep. So I wonder if he had contact, maybe knocked the toe, knocked the alignment out, broke a suspension component. Really have no idea. Oh, they're putting a new tire on, so they must have cut one down. It's 
So welcome back, and our coverage continues with Bruce Raymond stuck in the pit. Something wrong with the left front, but uh, they're changing the tyres, and uh, maybe it is just that. Uh, they were looking quite quizzically at the bodywork and underneath and the brake duct uh, and the brake pads, but uh, they've just changed the tyre. Now they're looking at the front right. This is Bruce Raymond, the Optima Batteries car, number 54, and uh, stuck stationary, and this has got to be painful. No question about it. If you've just joined us, the drama we've had it's been a battle at the front between Zilic, Matos and Gonzalez, the top three, and they have held station, although Gonzalez has done his quickest lap at 206.9. That's been the battle at the front. It was a coming together with Anunciata and Andretti. Andretti losing out uh, and dropping back to 22nd. He's up to 18th again uh, and is now behind the new boy, Gavin Michelle, uh, North Carolina. And we're on board with Lostowski coming into the hairpin. And oh, oh, off goes the Eddie Jared Odrick. Morgan. That's yeah, Odrick, the uh, NFL, NFL player. player. Yeah, that looks like I don't know. It's hard to tell from that, but it looks like the exit of turn one. Um, in the grass, so I don't really know what could happen. Maybe he lost another braking, spun out, and there's a lot of runoff. So you can obviously you can have you can slide out to the outside there without really hitting anything. But maybe he just got beached there, or the car stalled. Zilich in the gray and blue right behind him dives in to the Mission Food Sunset Corner and as soon as that car comes out of the way Zilich will be in control and will lead them across the strip to restart this one you heard from Evan Slater there we've got plenty of tires underneath all of them now in terms of the cautions we've had it should now be a sprint to the end green flag waves and away we go 20 one lap's completed, 27 in all. Matos goes right behind Zillage. And here comes Merrill, as predicted. Merrill looking for a way past, but he can't quite do it. He stays in fourth, but that was a good move by the former champion. Yeah, Merrill tried to make a move around the outside there, which actually ended up opening up the inside for Austin Green to come in the inside. You can see right in front of Thomas Annunziato, there's oh! Austin Green. Oh, and then he gets pushed wide so Thomas Annunziato can sneak through. Yeah, uh, and Merrill's really, lost that place too, Annunziato, yeah. Yeah, an aggressive move by Thomas Merrill, but it really didn't work out for him. And instead of gaining one position, he ended yeah. up losing two. That's just kind of, that can happen in racing. If you're trying to position your car to make an opportunity, you have to put your car in weird places, which can sometimes end up slowing you down and putting it yourself in actually a worse position for the people behind you. Yeah, Nunziata getting very aggressive now. He now wants to get past Austin Green, who bounces over the curves. Down the Fangio, straight they go. Lostowski watching this all and waiting because he's got a chance of pouncing if any one of these three ahead of him makes a mistake. Merrill, though, desperate to get past after that uh, loss out to Annunciata. Meanwhile, Green holding them all up here, the four of them. And uh, as they race, so too does Rafa Matos. And in fact, Rafa's lost a place as well to uh, Tyler Gonzalez. Gonzalez makes it up to second place. Great move by the youngster on the veteran two-time champion. Well, that'll make some stirring moments in the Nitro Motorsports debrief afterwards because that is a great move by the young 17-year-old. Yeah, I mean, it's a great move. And then in Trans Am, we don't really have team orders. I don't know too, too no, much about no. what the Nitro Motorsports crew is, but I imagine in this stage of the season, they're not telling, they're no. not telling Tyler, don't pass Rava. They're Whoa. telling Tyler, go racing. So, I mean, it's great to see that. Look at this, side-by-side -side action down the Ullman back straight they go. Over 160 miles an hour, it's side-by-side -side action. Zillage is out of the way. In second place, Gonzalez. Austin, Austin Green on the outside, Thomas Annunziata on the inside, and he's going to make that done. stick. Yep, he has made it stick, and Annunziata is through on Green. Meanwhile, Lostowski. Oh, Austin Green's trying to come back for the over-under. Oh, Green gets... Well, he'll come to the outside. He'll try and see if he can nip past down the back uh, front straight. They come. So all this racing for the like the fifth, the fifth place position is just making the top three. That they're, they're just happy because they're able to get clean laps and pull away. So this is just opening up that gap and making it harder for Thomas Annunziato and Austin Green to get further up the field. Possible switch back for Green, and he, there's just no room to do it here through three and four. It's very tight through there, and then you head underneath the bridge coming up. And then down towards the hairpin, which is the obvious place for an overtake. But you've got to be really tucked in. Green's looking like he could make this move uh, down towards uh, the Q3 Turn 7 hairpin. And by the hotel, of course, he's just not close enough to make that move. Although I say that. Thomas Merrill down the inside. Merrill, of Adrian good. Lastasi. 
Yeah, this is Marilyn Lostowski, and this is oh. very reminiscent yeah. of what it's happened to Andretti, isn't it? Yeah, wow. But this time they made it stick, and they both came out clean. But just, yeah, just a little bit of rubbing there on exit, because neither of them want to give up this, the real estate they have, so they're pushing hard. Talking of Andretti, Ooh, he's up to 15. Yeah, Lostowski got a bad run out of that last corner, so Caleb Bacon down the inside was able to try the move because he got a little bit of a better exit. Fun fact, Caleb Bacon is driving the same car that I drove here last year. He bought the car from my old, uh, my, Ooh, my team owner. Yeah, and that's a good story. I like that. So you know that car well. Yeah, car. I know that car. That car got fifth year last year, so <laughs> I think, I don't know where they're running, but I think they're probably running in seventh. Yep. Sure. Yeah, eighth right now for yeah, Caleb Yeah, eighth at the moment. And Caleb Bacon, another one of these young guys uh, coming up through the ranks. Great onboard shots from Lostowski, really seeing both he putting in the car through his paces, but we're also watching closely on the car in front of him, uh, which has been a great little battle. Uh, Thomas Merrill getting through, and here comes your leader, Zilic. The clock ticking down, though, as are the laps. We're going to finish 23 laps of the 27 now. Annunziata has made an aggressive start to his 24 campaign. This is good stuff by the young 19-year-old. Right now, Nitro Motorsports are in second, third, and fourth. So, like uh, like Ben heard in the pit lane, they're trying to get that one, two, three, but the number seven car is still right in the way. But Connor Zilich is doing a great job right out front leading the pack. I said Annunciata is 19. He's actually 18. I don't want to put ages on him. <laughs> Austin Green, though, just 22 years of age, to 23 this year. And you have to be 24 or under to be in that young guns fight. Former rookie of the year last year, Austin Green, and now part of, or continuing to be part of the Three Dimensional Services Group with Doug Peterson. And Rafa moving on to the Nitro Motorsports team, and here he is in the 16th Nitro Motorsports car, but overtaken by his teammate, the youngster. And he'll really would love to get back and uh, get past him because this is a race, race that Rafa loves to win. Yeah, I mean, Rafa was pushing hard there. You could see coming out of that turn the cube three turn seven you could see he was really lighting up the rear tires getting a lot of wheel spin so that shows that these rear tires are falling off and the problem is once you get that wheel spin once you get the surface temps really high and it's really easy to do it again and then the tires just start falling off really quickly so i worry that uh rafa matos is already in that stage where he's starting to lose the rear tires um and that could be why uh taylor gonzalez was able to get by him because maybe his his, uh, his rear tires are starting to fall off and therefore his pace is falling off Yep, Franklin Road Apparel, of course, the sponsor of Gonzalez and continues to be a big part of this championship. Kent Waits will join me in commentary, the man who runs that outfit, uh, Franklin Road Apparel, in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. And uh, great to have him as part and uh, owner now with uh, Tommy Dreesey of that team. But this has been an immaculate performance for Iconis Zilic. It may not be the most exciting race uh, for him at the front, but he's just controlled it, hasn't he? Yeah, I mean, he's just controlled it. He's just done what he wants the whole time. And what he wants is just to drive, not at quite 100%, but just drive at 98% this whole time. And he's proven that his his 98%, not pushing the car over its limits, but just still driving it really hard for a consistent race pace. He's proven that that works well and his car can take it. And um, he has the pace when doing that. So really great controlling from him, just just showing everybody what he has and just using the pace that he has. You know, interestingly enough, Thomas Annunciata uh, in fourth place just in his fastest personal lap, uh, a 207.45. But Zilic is even quicker than that, a 207.2. So that's what we mean by controlling the race. Even though fastest laps are being put in, he's actually quicker than the entire field right now even at this stage of 24 of the 27 gone. High above then, looking at getting a little bit crowded going into three there in the mid-pack. Zillage on his way in the gap, 1.6 seconds. Silver hair, what a great story. And Morris Hall and his team. Morris might be doing some racing later in the year, but uh, once again with Connor Mosak and Connor Zillage, uh, he's got uh, a pretty impressive group behind him interestingly enough Connor Mosak who started what in fourth, fourth position is down in 12 and like you say we're really not sure what the deal is as to why Connor because we would expect him at the sharp end uh, yeah, but we're, down we're, in 12. when we were talking from the engineer with silver hair Ben was talking to them um he was saying the car's a little bit loose so that uh, means, what that means is the car is sliding around the rear end of the car wants to kind of drift through all the corners and obviously drift cars are cool but drifting is not fast around a racetrack so no. So that's what he's struggling with. He can't put the power down. He can't really corner the car that well because the rear end just wants to slide and spin out. So he has to be really careful, and he's losing pace due to that. Um, 
So that's unfortunate for him, but that, I mean, that happens. When you add when you add all the fuel to the back of these cars, we've been running them in qualifying trim. We just qualified was the session before, so you have, like, no fuel, very lightweight, new tires. But when you add that 150 pounds of fuel to the back end of the car, it can make them drive in definitely different ways. So I think just adding that fuel obviously made his rear end step out a lot, and um, it gave him an unfor unfortunate symptom, I guess, of the car being loose. Well, he's down in 12. He's got Bose behind him. Andretti's he's up to 14th. He's trying to chase them both down. As going through shot is Adrian Lostowski in the all-new colors. It's hard not used to seeing him in the, in the fast auto red and white and black. But uh, we'll get used to it. Meanwhile, CB Motorsports, Caleb Bacon, Bacon nicely done. On Ben Mayer. Ben Mayer was in a tussle early on in the race, hit the grass. And another one of the youngsters on his way up, Ben Mayer, and his brother also races, even younger. And uh, so we might be seeing a couple of those boys coming through, as well as Ben now in his, what, third season or second season, full season? This is his, he did his first full season last year, so this That's is right. his second full season yep. that he's starting right now. Yeah, big season for him, no question. The POE Marine yeah. Ford Mustang. Yeah, yeah. BOE Marine, there it is. So pushing away and back on board with Lostowski. The clock ticking down. 25 of the 27 gone. And at the moment, it's a full control here for Connor Zilic. He started pole and he's never looked back. And he's had extensions off that lead throughout this race. Uh, but never really looked in ch uh, to be challenged. Gonzalez got ahead of Matos at the restart last time and uh, now has a deficit of, what, 1.9 seconds as this battle will rage on. Yeah, and Ben Mayer got passed, but he's not giving it up. He's really pushing Caleb Bacon to his limits, and he's trying to get that place back. Yeah, this is for top eight, remember? Yeah, and two laps to go, so they're using everything they have. He's really trying to get that place. Here they come. Past the Bennett's Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend, and into 16, 15 and 16. That sector's so fun to drive. Through that through that high-speed Bennett Bridge Hall, Bishop's Bend, um, you're going like 140 miles an hour flat out, and then you're hard into a braking zone. It's just it's so smooth. This track is known to be super bumpy, but that one sector is really smooth, and it's just it's fun to drive. Let's see if uh, Ben Mayer peeks his nose out into turn 17. No, he uh, he's going to wait. Possible turn three, possible to hairpin, but uh, time running out, and uh, if he doesn't make it, somebody else might, because Boris said Junior's just there too, just behind. And of course, he's got Boris a really Junior, good run we hardly mentioned him. Yeah, he did, didn't he? So I wonder if he's going to peek his nose on the inside into turn one. Well, Boris said got a good run. He's going to the outside. It's all on. Caleb Bacon, Bacon under defending. big praise. And there's a slight mistake by the CB number 18. Oh, yeah, went a little bit wide open Didn't the door he? right for Caleb Bacon, or uh, for Ben Mayer. Right? Yeah, he got a little wiggle on as though he was losing grip. And he also and opened then, the door for Morris oh, Jr. Morris said Jr., that was beautifully done. Oh, that was a trick off the old man's uh, hat. Uh, that was a, a Boris said maneuver there by Jr., nicely done. Yeah, so Caleb Bacon just lost a little bit of momentum there because he went too late on the brakes into turn one, so then he ran wide, couldn't get the power down. So then on that short shoot into turn three, he just didn't have the, the speed. So then Boris Ed Jr., who got a good exit, could just pull out and do a really easy overtake. So Chevrolet versus Mustang, and I wonder if uh, the 75... Of oh, Ben Mayer went a little wide in the Q3 oh, architecture. Come on, Boris. Hairpin. Yep, very wide, and uh, just lost a little bit of momentum. That's all it takes, isn't it, really? Back on board with Lostowski. It's been yeah, a smooth this, race for him. At this stage in the race, these cars get hot on the inside. It's like 160 degrees Ugh. in the inside of these cars. So when you're sitting in there for close to an hour, it gets it's really it's really hot, it's sweaty, you're mentally tired. So it's really easy to make these mistakes. And especially when your tires are starting to fall off, you have no grip, so the car is starting to slide around and starting to move around in ways you don't want. So you're still an hour into driving these cars, so it's really easy to make a little mistake. So Ben Mayer did, but luckily it wasn't too consequential for him. Yeah, I like to call it an endurance sprint because it really does feel that way. Uh, Zilic is extending that lead now to just over two seconds. Gonzalez will consolidate second place. Matos still third, uh, and that's a Chevrolet Ford Ford uh, for the podium. But here comes Connor Zilic waiting for the white flag, and he'll see it this time round in front of our commentary booth. There it is, and Zilic starts his last lap here. The battle is still on for third place. Uh, no question, Matos is close enough to make a lunge, but uh, I don't think, given it's his teammate, he will. And Anciata's got a solid fourth place. Green in fifth, 
Merrill still six, Lostowski just a little bit further behind, but the battle on between Bacon, Mayer and Boris said in seventh, eighth, ninth position. Mosak 11th, Andretti's up to 12th now. Both of them have got past Barry Bowes. Josh Hurley yeah. drops to 15th. Yeah, it sucks what happened to Adam Andretti. That really, that racing incident is really unfortunate for him. But he's had a great recovery. I think he was as low as 18th, and now he's got up to 12. He was down um, in 22nd after the incident. Oh, really? Was yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's a great recovery. Well, what can you say? Uh, we both watched in absolute admiration uh, Connor Zilic a couple of times last year, uh, and we couldn't. Uh, the platitudes we were giving him. I mean, he. You know, I kept saying it. He was 17. Now probably 18, or about to turn 18. Um, but he could do no wrong, and it seemed that even when penalties were thrown at him, um, you know, where he had to potentially come through the field, um, he was able to rise above it and also psychologically not be affected. There was one, I think, at Detroit where he had bowl uh, and had to start right at the back, not getting out in time, and uh, he came all the way through. Yeah, I mean, he's proven that he's a great driver, and that Silver Hair team has also proven that they can put together yeah. a good car. So, I mean, that combination is just... I mean, it's proven that in Trans Am right now, that's the combination you need to win. And I think he's won, like, so many races, obviously, last year, starting this year in a great way. Um, so they've proven, he's proven that he's a great driver. And it just, it shows. Yeah, no question. Just the long Ullman straight to go then for the youngster, Connor Zillage and the Silver Hair Racing Team, the Chevrolet Camaro, coming into view now through the heat haze. Down the back straight towards the Mission Food Sunset. And it's been a pretty immaculate performance by the number seven. He won more races than anybody last year, but Cruz pipped him, and look at that, sliding around the last corner, but in full control to take the checkered flag here. Connor Zillage wins the first race of 2024 for the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 Series. Second place goes to Tyler Gonzalez, and that's a huge scalp in beating the two-time champion and teammate Rafa Matos for third. Anunciata takes fourth, Green fifth, uh, Thomas Merrill takes sixth, Lostowski seventh, Ben Mayer holds on for eighth position ahead of Boris Said Jr. ninth, Kayla Bacon now crosses the line in tenth position. Well, here we are down at the winner's circle for the Cube 3 TA2 Architectures TA2 Series winner's circle at the Sebring Speed Tour waiting for Connor Zillich to get out, probably elated. But man, Tyler Gonzalez, Rafa Matos, what a running from them. Just a few weeks ago, the winner of the 24 Hours of Daytona. Unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen, Silver Hair Racing, Connor Zillish. That has got to feel really good. Connor, we. Connor, come back to me. He's got to say hi to his team because what a great start to the series. Competitors coming over congratulating you. This has got to feel really good. It seemed like you just were the class of the field the whole race. Yeah, my uh, my Silver Hair crew. It's it's a pleasure to race for these guys every time I come back to this series, and um, you know I'm just so grateful for all their work. And Maurice and Laura Hole, they've uh, you know the team that they've built and how far we've come in the last two or three seasons is uh, it's really cool. So um, you know I'm just glad to be a part of this team, and um, you know thankful for all the opportunities Chevrolet for supporting me and. Um, you know, all my family, my dad, for, for coming out here and, and making this all possible. My mom back at home, I'm sure she's watching. So, um, you know, there's so many people that, that make this happen. And, um, you know, I'm just beyond grateful to be in this position. Nice. Connor Zillish, unbelievable silver hair racing. I got to come over here, though, and talk to Tyler Gonzalez. Unbelievable, man. In somebody else's car, uh, made a great pass on your teammate, Rafa. First time ever at Sebring. Just unbelievable outing. Yeah, I mean, I just can't thank Nitro Motorsports enough. They gave me a great car, and uh, I was able to come out here and perform for myself and for them. Uh, I had a good little battle at the end with Rafa. It was sadly the only passing I got to do, but Connor drove a great race. I can't thank uh, Trans Am and Mav TV, Nitro Motorsports, Toyota. I, all these guys helped me so much, and I'm just glad to be here. Yeah, the, the Franklin Road Apparel Company, Nitro Motorsports car, given to you by your friend Brent Cruz. You, anything you want to say to Brent? I'm sure you're watching, Brent. Yeah, unfortunately, he was sick and couldn't make it. I would have loved to have another teammate out here, but thanks for the car. It's really fast, that's for sure. Thanks for the help, and uh, glad I could do, it, do a good job for you guys. Nice. Well, let's come over here to Rafa. Rafa has been on the podium here at Sebring many times. What a great start for your championship run, your third championship run in the TA2 Series. How you feeling? Yeah, not bad at all for the first race. We, we had to make sure we finished the race, right? So it's a long championship. It's uh, it's uh, we got to score points. If we win, 
uh, one of those races just a big bonus for us. So we, we had a, a pretty good battle. Myself and my, and my teammate Tyler, Tyler Gonzalez, you know, I think we, our car was a little bit too free towards the end, so I couldn't, couldn't really hold him. And uh, we just had nothing for, for Connor uh, today. You know, it was a, a third place day for us, and I'm glad we finished. Heads off to the Nitro Motorsports team, building eight very fast race cars. And, you know, um, a, a shout to Chris Dyson, you know, allowing us to compete at the highest level. You know, uh, we have the Concord American Flag Pole Company as the primary sponsor of the car. So very proud to be carrying their, their logo on our car. Super happy with the PME engines and the, ch the Cope chassis. So we, we had a good car today. Just uh, we missed a little bit for, for that P1, but looking forward for the re rest of the championship. Nice. Thank you very much, Rafa. Then we had Thomas Anunziata there, Barry Bowes, unbelievable. But Jonathan, back to you. Thanks, Ben. Keep yeah, loud, interesting crowd. words like from that. Rafa Matos. And of course, that stable of uh, Nitro, some eight drivers in all. But it's Silver Hair who gains the first victory of the year with Connor Zilic. Nitro takes second, third, and fourth with Gonzalez, Matos, and Anunciata. It's going to be a real battle. Three dimensional services are far from out of it. Austin Green is going to fly the flag for them. Doug Peterson sadly retiring. Merrill takes six for the HP Tuners Cope race cars, the first of the Cope cars to come in in sixth place. Lostowski in seventh, Ben Mayer eighth, Boris said Jr. in ninth for Silver Hair, and Caleb Bacon rounding out the top ten. In eleventh, Connor Mosak, Adam Andretti got back up from 22nd to 12th. Bows, Early, Mock, Bushell, Rogers, Barker, Sabato, and Keith Procher rounding out the top 20. Further down, it was a big field of over 39 cars. Durbin, Gallagher, Winston, Gray, DeLong, Paul, and as you can see, they are a few laps down. Bruce Raymond coming in to the pits, and likewise, Rogerio and several others. Odrick ending up at the exit of one. Philip Sheehan, Ellis, Saunders, Caton, Rumberg, and Peterson not finishing race one of the Cube 3 Architecture TA2 series.